la 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 This is the Pantheon Fallon Est in which you have to kill all 42 bosses actually defeated because killed is not a nice word uh, of the game without ever dying and this is the very last stage no! That was so close That was so close yeah. The very first boss fight of this uh, Pantheon is uh, Vengefly King, a very very easy boss fight of course, you don't really need to pay attention to your health here, just get rid of the first uh, and the second one, uh, and uh, easy peasy on to the next one. After that uh, is uh, the Grass Mother, the arena is a bit different compared to the main game's uh, boss fight, we have some spikes, uh, all you wanna do here is just use Shade Clock to avoid uh, some of the attacks, uh, and uh, that's it basically. For the false knight a very nice charm to have is the quick slash because you can uh, down him before he even lands an attack Then when he's downed you can use the dream nail to get some of the soul back As you see here he's starting to do an attack but before he can even do that he's down once again Massive Moss Charger is one of my favorite boss fights in this Pantheon because it's super easy to deal with You just have to stand still and hit him at the right time like bing bong bong bang bang bong ding dong bong There we go First of the two Hornet fights uh, is uh, really not that difficult and doesn't have any tricks, uh, so just uh, fight it um, normally, I guess, and uh, it should be okay. Next up is the Gorb fight, uh, nothing crazy about this one. Usually I try to stay in the middle platform just because uh, Gorb will usually come around and use the Abyss Shriek every now and then, and it should be quite easy. The main trick uh, worth uh, noting for the Dunk Defender boss fight uh, is uh, to use uh, Descending Dark uh, when it's uh, underground, uh, that way you can easily attack it as soon as it uh, pops out. The Soul Warrior fight uh, is uh, quite a lengthy one, uh, but uh, it is uh, very simple to understand uh, when it's about to teleport because uh, he will raise uh, his hand for a brief second and he can either teleport above you or on the side. There is also a few mobs that spawn every now and then, my best advice is to get rid of them as soon as they spawn. Next is uh, Tizo! What to say about this boss fight? Well, nothing. Brooding Molek is um, a bit of an annoying fight in my opinion. It's uh, not too difficult, you just wanna use your Shade Clock to dash through it and then use the Descending Dark every now and then to get the invisibility frames out of them. Uh, just be careful of the claws uh, and you should be good to go. The last boss fight of this uh, first stretch uh, is uh, Nail Master Oro. Whenever it disappears from the screen, just uh, jump up to avoid uh, the dash attack. It shouldn't take long to get rid of it. And uh, when uh, Mato joins the fight, you can use the Dream Nail to get some soul back. My tip here is to always stay on uh, one side to both of them. If you do happen to get trapped uh, between the two of them, just use the Descending Dark for the iframes uh, and then uh, you should be good to go. Finally, we can regenerate some uh, health at the first hot spring uh, and then it's on to Xero. Be very careful of uh, the trajectory of these uh, swords. My tip here is to jump whenever a sword uh, is about to be thrown. That way, when it comes back to Xero, it uh, won't interfere uh, with you standing on the platform. Some good spells to use here are Vengeful Spirit, which can hit Xero multiple times, as well as uh, Abyss Shriek. The Crystal Guardian is a very easy boss fight, it doesn't have much health and if you have a quick slash you're gonna be able to get rid of him pretty fast. The only really tricky attack of Soul Master is when it teleports twice like in here, all you wanna do is jump so you have the possibility to double jump and dash away. When there is these rotating fireballs just use the Abyss Shriek for multiple damage and that's pretty much it. Oh wow, the Oblobos, I despise them so much. The primal aspids, uh, third evolution basically. What you wanna do is, uh, you don't want to learn their patterns, uh, you can, but don't please. Uh. Well, what you wanna do is just uh, reduce them to the same amount of HP, more or less. Uh. Whenever they get close to each other, use the Abyss Shriek, which is a golden opportunity to deal damage to both of them at the same time. And once one of the two Blobos falls, uh, please just spam the Abyss Shriek onto the last one so you can get rid of it very quickly. Up next is the uh, Sisters of Battle, which uh, is uh, one of my favorite boss fights. Uh, 
In this boss fight uh, you have to be particularly uh, quick with the reflexes, uh, both with attacks and the dodging. Most of the times you can land an attack uh, every time uh, they do a plunge attack. Uh, and uh, I would suggest uh, avoiding hitting uh, the ones that are uh, on the walls. Note that this one is the last boss fight of the second stretch, uh, so you can utilize all the souls that you have uh, up until now. Another quick stop at the hot spring and it is uh, on to Marmon. This one is a very unpredictable fight. Uh, the arena per se is not very annoying because you're never gonna be walking towards the spikes. Uh, you do wanna use uh, Abyss Shriek because if you get lucky you can hit Marmon multiple times. With respect to the Fluke Marm fight, uh, all you have to do is just uh, get on the Fluke Marm and uh, keep pogoing it. Uh, every time the critters spawn, uh, just uh, get rid of them. Uh, you should be able to defeat the Fluke Marm before the second wave of monsters. There is no particular strategy needed for a broken vessel, uh, just uh, dodge an attack. Whenever this attack happens, uh, then what you want to do is most of the time just descend dark uh, and you should be good to go. For Galeon's boss fight, uh, all you want to do is uh, just uh, keep hitting upwards as many times as you can uh, and uh, dash through any of the sides uh, that uh, come your way. Last uh, boss fight uh, of uh, the third stretch uh, is the Paint Master Shio. It is very easy to understand which attack uh, they are gonna use uh, by the color on their brush. Uh, the blue one is uh, nothing too crazy. The purple one uh, makes uh, a cascade of colors. Uh, the yellow one is probably the most difficult to dodge. Uh, but uh, what you want to do here is uh, again use the iframes uh, from uh, Descending Dark uh, and uh, it shouldn't be too difficult of a boss fight. After the third hot spring uh, it's uh, time to fight the Hive Knight. Uh, this boss fight uh, is actually kind of basic uh, in the sense that uh, you don't have to learn any particular tricks. Uh, all you gotta do is uh, simply attacking and dodging. The boss fight against uh, Elder Who is uh, one that uh, really benefits from the use of the Shade Cloak. Uh, if you're really bored, uh, you can try to defeat this boss fight without effort dashing. The collector is uh, very easy, just try to kill any of the enemies uh, that fall from the ceiling as soon as they drop down, uh, and then just keep hitting uh, the collector. The God Tamer is actually a very interesting fight. Uh, in this one you have uh, two enemies, one is the beast and the other one is the actual God Tamer, which you don't want to fight, uh, because uh, if you defeat the beast, uh, you defeat the boss basically. So you'll notice that most of the times uh, the beast uh, will uh, roll against the wall and then it jumps backwards. Uh. So yeah, my tip is uh, don't uh, be close to the god uh, tamer so that you can hit the beast uh, by itself. You can start uh, Troop Master Grimm's fight by attacking them at the very beginning so that you can trigger this uh, pufferfish phase. This phase in particular is just uh, platforming so just avoid the fireballs. Uh. And uh, the attack that I use the most here is the Great Slash because you have a lot of time in which you can charge it up and also the window in which you can attack Grim is uh, very little so it's best to deal as much damage as you can. Other than that, just be careful when these dragons come out not to immediately go towards Grim because otherwise it will teleport away and that should be it. After a quick heal up at the fourth hot spring it's time for the Watcher Knights fight. This fight is a little bit bugged since uh, the last patch that they released uh, and uh, as you notice sometimes uh, when they start spinning they either go backwards or they stand still so just uh, watch out for that. All you wanna do is uh, just uh, shade the cloak through them and uh, use the shade soul whenever they are aligned so that you can deal damage to both of them with just uh, one attack. Umu's boss fight is one of those ones that I really don't like because you have to be super patient uh, and uh, wait for the right window to hit one of these jellyfish, uh, which by the way I found out they are called Uma. So just hit one of these Uma against the Umu and then just pogo down against the Umu, uh, be careful not to hit the Uma, then hit the Uma against the Umu again and pogo down on Umu. Note that you can also dream nail the Umas if needed for some soul. Noski is one of those boss fights that ended uh, my Pantheon 5 runs uh, uh, more often than I'd like to admit. Uh, it's actually kind of annoying to understand uh, where the acid uh, is gonna land uh, whenever it sprays it all over the arena. But what I found out is uh, just standing in the middle of the arena makes it easy for you to determine uh, where to stay so that you don't get hit. Uh, also try not to heal whenever it goes onto the ceiling because you never have enough time uh, to dodge uh, those attacks. Uh, other than that, uh, just spoke on Oscar and you should be able uh, to defeat it uh, without too much trouble. Great Nasage Slice pool of attacks uh, is uh, pretty big uh, so make sure to try this one out uh, a lot of times before uh, fighting it in Pantheon 5. Uh, be careful for this charge attack because of course uh, they deal uh, double damage. My best tip here is uh, to attack after this uh, sequence of uh, 1, 2 slashes and a pirouette. 
and remember that when it does the cyclone dash you can pogo off of it uh, so that you don't get hit by it uh. in the second phase of uh, slice fight uh, you will want uh, to dash away from whichever direction Sly comes from and then hit it uh, with uh, a charged up uh, great slash uh, since you won't have uh, a possibility to attack uh, many times uh, you want to deal as much damage as possible of course the last boss fight uh, of this uh, sprint uh, is uh, Hornet from uh, Kingdom's Edge it doesn't really differ that much from the first Hornet fight, it's just a little bit more up-tempo and it has this spike attack which can be a little bit annoying. What I try to do is just get rid of all the spikes before I continue on with the fight. Another quick stop at the Hot Spring and then we're on to the Enraged Guardian. This boss fight deals double damage so be very careful. Nevertheless you shouldn't worry because it does have that much health and as you'll notice now I'm already done with this boss fight after a few hits only. My suggestion for the Lost Kin boss fight uh, is to avoid uh, healing at any point in time uh, because uh, it's, it has a very high attack rate and also because it keeps spawning these uh, infected balloons. Uh. Something that threw me off uh, really uh, was the jump attack because I never knew if it was gonna land immediately or if it was gonna stop and then dive onto me. With respect to no eyes, uh, my tip for beginners uh, is to always stay in the bottom two platforms uh, that way you have a better visual on where all the ghosts are floating from. You have to be a bit patient with this strategy, but at least you won't incur into any uh, spike or uh, weird situation where you just get hit uh, two times, uh, uh, one after the other, which is very likely in this boss fight. My suggestion is also to always use uh, the Great Slash, because uh, once you hit uh, No Eyes a couple of times, uh, it usually uh, teleports away. The Traitor Lord fight can be a tricky one because of uh, the double damage, uh, almost ended my Stuso run actually. And uh, the trick here of course is to just uh, dash through it whenever it comes to your way. Um, it's all about timing, but uh, if you practice this enough, uh, it's uh, actually not that difficult uh, and it's uh, quite quick. Now for the last boss fight before the hard part of Pantheon 5, uh, we have the White Defender. There's actually really no tip that I can give uh, on this boss fight, it's uh, really not that difficult. Uh, there are just a few attacks that uh, can be a little tricky maybe uh, if you're too close to it. But uh, remember that you can hit these dunk balls uh, to deflect them and uh, you should be good to go. And now for the interesting part. This is the last long stretch of bosses and you really want to make sure to lose as little health as possible in here. Starting off with the Soul Tyrant. The big trick here is to avoid the uh, fireballs by dashing towards them, that way they will crash onto the ground. With the rotating fireball attack it is best to jump an Abyss Shriek, that way you get a bit of air time and levitate without getting hit by the fireballs whenever you go down on the ground. And for the last phase of this boss fight, make sure that you're both jumping and dashing because if you stay on the ground just by dashing, you will get hit by the diving attack. Then in this part, the only thing that you have to do is dodge the fireballs like we explained before and the soul tyrant should be done for. And now for one of my most dreaded boss fights, like I hate Marcos, I yeah, like this spies me, so stupid, I, I hate it. It's already difficult enough without uh, having such an arena. Anyways, the Great Slash is the attack that you want to use. Uh, and here you saw I was very lucky because Marco got uh, stuck in between uh, two platforms. Uh, and that is the best way that uh, you can land a lot of hits by pogoing uh, onto his head. Now Marco, you want to practice a lot of times outside of Pantheon 5. Uh, because uh, it has a lot of RNG in my opinion uh, which you have to be very good at uh, dealing with uh, uh, to the point that you can almost do this hitless. Uh, whenever its uh, second shield comes out uh, you want to use all of your soul uh, into shade soul form uh, to get rid of it uh, as fast as you can. Let's go! Only two hits! Now for those who don't know the fearless essential mysterious enchant whatever you get it uh, Zot uh, this boss fight is not a mandatory boss fight, because if in story mode you don't save Zot, uh, they will not appear in uh, Pantheon 5. But of course it doesn't feel like the same achievement if you defeat Pantheon 5 without Zot, right? But enough gatekeeping. Unlike all the other bosses, it is very difficult with Zot to understand uh, what is going to be the next attack. So it is crucial to understand uh, Zot's move by practicing like a lot of times uh, before Pantheon 5. As always, make sure to always kill these critters as soon as they are spit out by Zota. 
And whenever Zota goes through the ground, uh, you'll have to learn how to time perfectly a descend in dark. Uh, that way you can get the invisibility frames out of it uh, and you will also damage Zot at the same time. Uh, that is one of the most important aspects of this fight because he will do that a lot of times. The failed champion is uh, hands down one of the easiest boss fights of this uh, last section of Pantheon 5. Uh, there is also a very nice little trick that you can use to get all of your soul uh, back to max uh, an infinite amount of times. Uh, and that is just by hitting it uh, on its back uh, when it's uh, in a down position and then you can keep uh, dreaming nailing it uh, until you have uh, your soul back to full. Uh, other than that just use Abyss Shriek multiple times uh, so that you get uh, multiple hits off uh, with just one attack uh, and then that should be it. With only 3 bosses left uh, it is time to face one of my favorite boss fights in this game uh, which is Nightmare King Grimm. My suggestion is here to use always a great slash when attacking and then if possible use a normal attack like in here because it is very difficult to land multiple hits at the same time uh, since you have to wait a lot uh, and it usually despawns uh, very fast after you have attacked it. The damage taken is double uh, and luckily when it transforms into a swarm of bats uh, you have the possibility to heal up for exactly 2 hit points. Most of the attacks uh, are very similar to Troop Master Grimm's attacks, uh, just a little bit uh, more complicated, so the strategy doesn't really change much. There's specifically one new attack which consists of geysers. The strategy here is to go away from NKG and then when the second geyser erupts, uh, go towards NKG and attack it. This can be a very long fight, but at this point of the run it is better to always take your time and be able to avoid all of the attacks uh, rather than rush and attack uh, Nightmare King Grimm to finish it fast. So here we are, the very last hot spring before the ultimate showdown. Pure Vessel. You might be surprised by what I'm gonna say, but uh, this boss fight is actually not that difficult. Uh, the moves uh, are very very easy to read uh, and uh, every move that uh, Pure Vessel does uh, is very unambiguous uh, with regards to which attack is coming up next. Uh, so if you know how to respond uh, to each of these attacks, uh, it is very very simple to prepare yourself uh, right before that happens. There are a total of 3 knockdowns that you have to perform uh, before defeating it uh, and after the second one there is a new attack which is with uh, sort of bubbles, uh, all you wanna do is just stay away of the big one uh, and then uh, see if uh, the small ones don't spawn close to you. There is also a new attack after the third knockdown uh, which consists of uh, black tentacle reaching out towards you all you gotta do is uh, jump up and then dash on the head of uh, Pure Vessel. My trick here to understand if it's uh, the tentacles attack or the knives attack is just look at the hand. If it's white you know it's knives, if you see black only you know that it's the tentacles. Just watch out for those uh, after the third knockdown. <sighs> now I just have to play the, f the, the patience game and focus of course. 40 minutes and 41 bosses later, it is time to take on the Absolute Radiance. Absolute Radiance is without a doubt the most difficult boss fight of uh, Hollow Knight and you can only fight it here in Pantheon 5 as the last boss. And of course in the Hall of Gods as well once you have uh, encountered it for the first time. In the very first phase uh, the attacks are actually pretty simple, you just have to be patient in this whole fight and just find the right moment to attack. Here Abyss Shriek is the best uh, attack to use because uh, it will deal uh, multiple damage uh, with the same uh, cast. When the blades are falling down from above, you can also sneak in between the little gaps of the knives. I see a lot of people don't do that, they just go for the bigger gap, but it is actually very doable. As you notice you can heal up right before the second phase uh, where uh, you mostly want to be standing on the lower platform. With the Sun Spheres attack it is in fact very easy to make them crash if you stay at the bottom. Whenever given the chance always go for a descend in dark uh, and uh, that will deal a lot of damage and it will give you the invisibility frames to avoid any incoming attack. In here I did it a bit too late so I wasn't able to pull that off. As you notice, uh, I'm always moving between uh, these uh, three platforms basically because it is very easy to manage uh, the attacks uh, and uh, here I also got lucky because we went to the lower platform and I was able to deal a lot of damage first by pogoing and then by using the descending dark. Once again, lower platform is the better spot to avoid the sun spheres uh, and after this sequence uh, we should be able to get into phase 3. 
Phase 3 is uh, basically a huge climb. You have to be careful not to get hit by this laser. It is very random and there's different methods. My preferred method is to just keep going and then if you see that it's uh, about to come your way, just uh, dash away from it. For the last phase, all you gotta do is just keep pogging on top of Absolute Radiance uh, since the spheres uh, will disappear once they leave uh, the top of the screen. Let's go! Let's go, guys! We made it! Oh my god! Let's go! Oh! Oh my god! We made it! Pantheon 5, all 42 bosses, uh, deathless! I cannot believe it, guys! Let's go! Oh my god! The day has come, finally! 100% achievements! Oh my god, I am gonna savor this moment, I'm gonna... That was also a very good uh, run. Uh, that was also a very good Absolute Radiance run. I never expected to see these cuts in myself it's cool achievement unlocked embrace the void it's 100 percent let's go oh my god i'm not even shaky too much okay i'm a bit i'm a bit <laughs> Thanks for sticking around all this time. Oh my god. Congratulations, well done on achieving this great feat. You persevered and you triumphed. Triumphed. Uh, we hope you enjoyed yourself with the world of Hollow Knight. We'll meet again soon on the road ahead. Embrace the void. Ascend the pantheon of Hollow Knight and take your place at its peak. Oh, I, I actually cannot believe that. Th this was literally one of those achievements that I was like, I will never get. Like... There is no way I will ever get this one. It takes way too much time. That is gonna be a YouTube video. Ah, uh, tonight we're gonna sleep very well. That is for sure.